Hi there. So we made the trip to Buffalo again, um, just during the week, last Thursday. Um, I don't know when this will go out, so that could have been a few weeks ago because I've been building up some videos. You go for a long time and you have nothing to say or nothing new or no new ideas to post and then all of a sudden you have a bunch of things, but it's probably because it's the summer and um, being out more and um, I don't know. I just have a lot of videos um, piling up and so I have to get to editing. And the big one that I want to do about urban sketching, not sure if this is going to go out before that or after, but subscribe and you won't miss out. So what did I get at Hyatt's? Hyatt's is this huge warehouse style art supply store in Buffalo and it's amazing. They ship, um, I guess they ship internationally, I'm not sure. They do ship to Canada, it's expensive because um, you have to pay duty and you have to um, pay for expensive shipping. So I, they do um, sell through Amazon too. You'll see like a little thing that says from Hyatt's, um, but again, you're gonna get hit for duty and a little bit cheaper shipping though. But when you can see and test out things, well, not that I tested out these, but it's so much different. I'm sure you'll say the same. It's so much different when you can walk into the store and see things and see new things that you wouldn't even think of looking for on an online um, retailer. So what I did get was uh, some things that are new to me, um, but they're pretty ancient um, media. So I'm going to go through these. I've, I work at an auction house uh, part-time and I've been meaning to do up uh, a kind of binder full of different types of media. So if anyone's having a difficult time identifying what media an artwork is, they'll be able to refer to that binder and see how some things like tempera and gouache can kind of look alike. Um, and it just gives them a little bit more of an idea of how to identify things. So that's why I picked up the tempera and that's why I picked up the casing. So, because I didn't have those, I'm not planning on becoming proficient in them, using them a lot, especially not the casing because it stinks. Um, I have a very small studio and I would not be able to get used to that. In fact, instead of swatching it out, I'm gonna show you the color uh, in my sketchbook and you could still smell it days later. So anyways, these are very ancient types of media. Temper has been long since really mixing pigments with a binder was developed. Casein is also a pretty old walnut oil or walnut um, ink, also pretty old. And then this assorted sauce. I'll give a little spiel about that too. So let's start with this box of assorted sauce. Now, Hyatt's has one of my favorite sections. It's a clearance section. And this was in the clearance section. And this is what I had on my list to look for. So it was just by me. Uh, I should have thought a little bit more carefully because um, I forget how much of a discount, but I think it quite wasn't enough because they are very broken. <laughs> now, I don't mind breaking a little bit, but this is quite a bit. Luckily, 
I kind of wanted it for testing and also for um, life drawing, so it's not that big of a deal. But yeah, this this is pretty broken. But this these drawing sticks are basically a medium that was used in the dark ages. Um, and they offer a full 10 value tonal range. It's very like soft pastel, but when it's applied to paper, it's got like a really kind of silky um, texture. And um, so, so apparently, I'm just looking at the Jack Rikeson um, website, breaking the sauce down into its powder form can add to the versatility of its use. Well, we're partway there. So that should be quite interesting. So let's try these out. May not be able to see that color. has quite a green tinge to it, as you'll probably notice. So if you blend them out, I'm trying to have enough fingers that are clean. see that you can um, use them in tones um, so you go for the lightest to the darkest it'll be really interesting to try out um, doing like a tonal study and seeing how they work right away I'm seeing more that this tone isn't quite as light as you would think it would be heading in this this um, di direction of tone. But I'll try them out and see what they're like. Then the next kind of ancient media is walnut ink, which is made from the green husk um, that's around the nut of a walnut. It has good archival properties and one of the ancient uses was to stain the hands of criminals in Romani um, communities. So that's just a little fun fact. But here we'll try using a bamboo pen. does give a nice wash effect. So it's not waterproof. You'll have to um, be careful of that if you're using it in um, like drawing um, and you're putting a wash over top of it. That's not going to work very well. But if you want to use it, use the line and then um, apply a wash, you can do that. So that, those are the two oldest. Uh, let's go to semi-old. So 
So as I said, I'm just going to show you the color of this casing. So it's pretty, just gonna open it briefly. <laughs> It's just like gouache paint, really. It has similar um, quality of matteness to it. It can show a little bit more of the brush stroke if you want it to. There are ways, like you can add water to dilute it, but there are also mediums that you can use so that you still retain the opacity of the paint as if out of the tube. So this is the Terfert um, by Jack Rikson. And they come in 37 milliliter tubes. This was, I think, 12 US for the tube. They're not cheap, um, but that is a good size tube. And then the prices go up from there. This is a series one, so I think, so that was the cheapest. And then I just put um, colored pencil and um, pastel pencil on top and it went on really really nicely I quite liked it it um, it does have a different feel to it um, to gouache but I wish you could smell it because it still smells it's unbelievable that was nearly a week ago that I put that on there and that's sneak preview of the tempera because I did want to try it out but let's do that. Well, before I do that, casein is um, also an ancient media, but it, its popularity really grew in the 19th and 20th century, especially when it became um, commercially manufactured. It has, like I said, a matte sheen, um, but it does become brittle with age. It sort of looks like wash like I said but casing can be re-wet like wash but it can also be applied more thickly um, although over time um, it will become water resistant unlike regular wash but now that we have okay bit of a technical glitch there I ran out of storage on my phone, so I'm not surprised because I use it for work um, and I've forgotten to take videos off it, which was really killing it. But we're moving on. I'm sure you didn't really miss anything. I went over the video and I think I kind of said all I had to say about the casing. So let's move on to tempera. Now this is also a jack. Rexon and Company uh, product, and they're known as semi-moist tempera cakes. So I just thought I'd get the small, there's a larger size um, for not much more, but I thought I would stick with the, the small size. I'm trying to load up quite a bit there. Now it's not going to be quite the same as if you mix pigments with um, with egg as the binder. It's not going to have quite the same sheen, I wouldn't think. And that's how they worked with it. They worked um, in layers, so I might come back over this and and do that. So tempered was used mostly in um, early Renaissance until the switch over to, uh, to oil. It's really difficult to get blue out of a brush sometimes. So this would be the Viridian. They're not named. So I'm just trying to get as much try not to put too much water but I am fortunately but I'll build it up in that way 
you can see. <clears throat> There's still artists. Oops. That's not clean enough. There are still artists who work in tempera, um, especially, that's still, um, especially restorers. Yeah, let's see, that's really, ah. contaminated there but not too bad so yeah restorers who are um you know they're icon restorers that when you're restoring things you do have to use the methods that were used although for say um painting restoration you wouldn't use oil paint to um, to in paint or retouch. You would use pigments with a binder that would allow uh, future generations to reverse it. You'd always want to be able to reverse the changes you made. Because things develop, um, you know, their varnish is used that it's like, oh, this is the best varnish ever. And then they found that it didn't work very well. Um, bitumen paint. If you see dark um, paintings, especially I think it was 19th century, you see them and they look like they have blisters um, in the dark areas. That's usually because the bitumen reacts badly over time. All right, I'm going to save the white and do the brown. It's still putting too much water on there. stays on the brush. Let's try the orange next rather than the black. pigmented because I'm having a difficult time cleaning that brush. Just trying to dab some excess water off. It's kind of annoying how they slide about. That's okay. Again, I'm not going to become a tempera paint artist. This was just to experiment for both work and myself. bit and then put the white over top. But 
first, I'm gonna change this water because it's filthy. Mm. Okay, so that was the first layer. I'm gonna layer on top of the same color just to see what sort of finish I get. But it's pretty, it's pretty opaque. I mean, you've added too much water for some of them, but some you see are pretty solid colors. Try to take off excess water. Really didn't want to lift the water underneath. It's like wash, you can't, um, it's not waterproof. Sorry about the, the water noises are so loud, but <clears throat> it is very difficult to clean this off a brush. And as we saw before, the yellow will not be yellow. This is really clinging on to the brush. So hi, it's this really great, um, really knowledgeable staff. They were super friendly. In fact, um, we, for dinner that night, we were, you know, determined that we would stay in Buffalo and, um, we went to a restaurant, I won't name, um, for a very Buffalo experience. And unfortunately, Something happened and they forgot our order. We asked a couple times, you know, or did you forget our order? And assured us, you know, everything was fine. And then, so about an hour later, we gave up. And then we remembered the really nice man at Hyatt's telling us about, um, a client that he has in Fort Erie and <clears throat> that the client's family used to own a Chinese restaurant and he had lived above it and now he has a studio above it and he still buys um, supplies from Hyatt's. So we remembered that the guy said it was really good food, you'd be able to see artwork, so we thought, well, why don't we go across the border and spend our money <laughs> um, in Canada. So we did. We went to Fort Erie and it was really, really great experience. Fantastic food. The um, service was absolutely wonderful. And we had a view of the water across to Buffalo. And it was just really, really nice. The restaurant is like, it's stepping back into time. Everything from 
um, the interior to the the way the menu is presented, even the folded napkins. It was just a really great experience. So I highly recommend it and I will put it in the description if you ever find yourself in Fort Erie or um, if you're ever in Buffalo and think, hmm, maybe I'll cross over to Canada and check it out because it's really quick cross the border. So this is watercolor paper. It's not the most expensive. It's cold press. Um, maybe hot press would give a little bit different. That's strange. I did the orange first before that. Um, might give a little bit different finish to it. I'm just layering up the colors to give you a sense of how they they work. I'm just going to try the white across this. You see it will it will mix with that. is it for the tempera and as usual i will um put this up on my website so you can download it and as a pdf um high res pdf and see for yourself i'm just going to give it a little bit more time to dry but that wasn't the only thing in the clearance section i got this. There's not even enough room to show it. I'm going to have to raise up the camera and zoom out a bit. There we go. This is the Yugo. It is a traveling easel. So that was just a quick sketch the other day that I did. It's mostly for painting. Um, you can have it flat out or you can have it on an angle. This moves up. Um, there are extenders that you can buy for that. There's also extenders to put on the sides. Um, this comes off. This is your mixing plate. I've managed to get some paper underneath that. Might as well take it all out. That's what you have below there. So that is a tea nut. And on the other side, this it's all magnetic, so these clip back in. And there's a nice little area for brushes or pencils. And this strap came with it. And then there's the tea nut and that can be put onto any tripod. So I've only taken it out the once. You have to move this down in order for it to fold properly. But it's really nice construction. It was in the clearance section only because someone had bought it and returned it. And so there was a little bit of paint on it. Um, that's just from the, the sticker that was on it for price. So it's a little bit bigger than what I wanted. And, you know, I couldn't justify it at full price. I really still can't justify it. But it was there in the clearance. And, you know, when it's just like a sign that it was meant to be. Uh, these can be bought in Toronto at Gortzman's and Articulations, who also ship. It's an American company. Um, I think they're in Pennsylvania. I'll have to look and put that below. But um, both of those stores have all the accoutrements. 
So the side things, the extra um, extender. <clears throat> Sorry, this is just really difficult to show on the video. But the extender for that is there. Uh, if you want a gray palette so that you're, when you're mixing um, oils or acrylics, it's a lot easier to do for tonal reasons on a gray palette. You can buy that and have it slipped in. And yeah, so that was the trip to Hyatt's. The success as usual. It's not like I wasn't going to come away with something. <coughs> I should have bought my usual Silman and Burn um, sketchbooks because they are a lot cheaper down there. Things are generally about the same price. If not, it pays to know your prices because sometimes it's actually cheaper in Canada. And sometimes it's like one American dollar and one Canadian dollar similar. And then when you factor in the exchange rate, which is about 75 cents, um, it becomes a bargain in Canada. It's hard to believe, but uh, that's the case in some cases. So really know your prices uh, before you shop in the States if you're Canadian um, or come to Canada and maybe you'll get a bargain here. So anyways, that is it for now. That's the haul and we'll see you soon. Thanks.